Hi, this is Lisa Piper with Miracle Deliverance. I'm actually teaching a class at the River right now, and I'm using this video to actually help students get caught up if they missed a class, or if you would like to do this class online, you can do that with us. On this website of miracledeliverance.com forward slash driven to be free, you will find the syllabus. Most weeks, the homework is reading three chapters of the book, Set Yourself Free by Robert Heidler highly recommend that book and I'll probably have a link for that on that website as well. Now I want to tell you some of the things to expect. First of all, there are some handouts, the Open Doors Worksheet, you can download that, the list of strongholds, the syllabus with the homework. If you're in class, you're getting a Miracle of Deliverance card that tells you the website miracleofdeliverance.com where there's other videos that you can watch. I highly recommend, if you have not watched it, the video series by Robert Morris from Gateway Church in Texas. It is called the Free Indeed Series. And you can go to the Miracle of Deliverance website and click on um, other teachings, I think it is, something about recommended teachings, and that will be listed on there for you. In this series today, we're going to talk about what is deliverance, I'm going to, if you were in class, we did an exercise where we did commonalities and discussed um, different nuances. But since you're online, you won't have to worry about that. And then I talked about my expectations for the course. I'll cover that again here in just a moment. Confidentiality and safety of the class and why we're even having this class. The class is five sessions long. Now I wanted to make a note here. This class is not about setting up rules for you to follow or influence you to say or do anything against your will. You can express yourself without fear, rejection, or shame. I'm asking that anything anyone divulges about themselves in the class session stays in the classroom and is not carried out. Just so that everyone feels safe and we can get the best uh, out of this class as possible. Um, this course is designed to help you receive all that God has already provided for you. There may, there may be moments that you want to call it quits. You may want to now, just this far into the video. But I hope you'll just commit to finishing the course, reading the material, doing your homework. And five weeks, I guarantee you there will be transformation if you're putting in the effort and the time and the commitment. Now, one of the reasons I want to make sure that you know that this is not setting up rules, I'm not setting up any demands on you, is because there are a lot of people have, who have experienced spiritual abuse. I'm not into that. We are here just to help you um, find all that God has for you. Now, the first scripture we're going to cover today is from Isaiah 61 and 1. It reads, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. That's awfully good news. Now, in the class, I would have said, what does Isaiah 61 mean? This is an important scripture. Let me tell you that when Jesus stepped into the temple in Luke 4 and 18, he got the scroll. He knew exactly where the scripture was at. He turned, rolled out the scroll, and he read this scripture. And then he said, this scripture has been fulfilled before you today. So Luke 4.18 repeats Isaiah 61.1. And basically, Jesus was saying, I'm the one bringing this. Now, what has happened is that a lot of times ministries and uh, churches, they embrace one piece of what Jesus provided, but not all. They may only embrace salvation. They may only embrace healing. Look at the scripture and it's, it is a whole package that Jesus provides. Good tidings to the poor. Salvation is included in that. Healing to the brokenhearted. Proclaim liberty to the captives and opening of the prison to those who are bound. We have a lot of people of faith who are still bound. Well, Maybe they are only embracing one piece of the gospel. Do you know that when Jesus sent the disciples out and believers out to minister, he never did that unless he fully equipped them to carry on what he provided in Luke 4.18. So that's good news for you. And the second scripture that goes with that is the sevenfold commission that Jesus gave to all of his followers. It's the anointing of Jesus, and it's found in Matthew 10, 7 through 8. It reads, and as you go, 
preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. This can seem like an impossible commission to go, preach, heal, cleanse, raise, cast out, and give. Be honest, do you think that any of the seven things listed seem impossible? Seems impossible to me. <laughs> so what has to happen is this course will prepare you to receive Luke 418 or Isaiah 61 and 1 so that you can do Matthew 10, 7 through 8. It's all in Christ. It is impossible for us. Now, the homework for this week is to study the first three chapters of Set Yourself Free by Robert Heidler. The first chapter is Understanding Your Enemy. It's not very smart to know that you're in a battle and not know how the enemy operates. Too often, believers don't know what he sounds like. They don't know what he looks like. He can whisper something that sounds like our own voice and we fall for it. We're going to understand the enemy. I have an analogy that I like to give. If you think about a pistol, a bullet, and pulling the trigger. If there was an enemy coming into your home and you happen to own a gun, if they came in to hurt you or hurt your family, you would put the bullet into the chamber and you would pull the trigger. Now I liken the pistol to power, the bullet to authority and pulling the trigger to faith. Now we have all three of those in Christ. What happens sometimes is that the enemy will come who has power and who has faith to use it, but has no authority over the believer. The only authority that he has is what you give to him. So let's say that you are in a church service and the Lord begins to deal with you about speaking to someone about a salvation issue. Let's say it is salvation. And as soon as you begin to contemplate obeying God, this voice comes up that is like, you better not do that. You're going to embarrass yourself. Let John do it. John is better at, at winning people than you are. He knows more than you do. What is happening is the voice of the accuser is accusing you. And if you fall for the lie, it's basically relinquishing your bullets, your authority. The enemy doesn't have the authority unless you give it to them. And here's how he gets it. He lies. And when you put faith into his lies, that gives him the bullet, which he puts into his power, puts into his gun, turns it on you, and he will shoot you with it. We've left so many of our bullets laying around for the enemy to use against us. So we're going to learn how to understand how the enemy works so that he no longer works on us. Chapter two is the wall of protection. You'll see that I have listed um, a worksheet of open doors. There are things in your life that, yes, you may be a believer, but if you open the door at two o'clock in the morning and there is a thug in your neighborhood, probably going to come in even though you own the house. Okay, so open doors is where uh, avenues by which the enemy can come in, which can include things like sin disobedience, unforgiveness. Okay. So look at that list and think about, do I have any of these open doors? Yes. There are believers that have bondages, addictions, perversions, things that they should not have. It's because there's some kind of open door there typically. So I want you to look at the other list and think about what may be what may have come in those open doors. So the first one's the open door. The second one, you just circle or check or make a mental check and look at the issues. Now, if underneath the bold word fear, you have circled or checked a lot of those, there may be a stronghold of fear in your life. And that's one way that you can tell. And during this course, you're going to be seeking the Lord to eradicate the stronghold and close that open door. And then the third chapter is the stronghold of the mind. Now, don't just take and read these three chapters, which they're not very long, but don't read them all in one sitting. You want to read where you can think and you can pray and digest 
the information. Hope that helps you. Next week, we are going to focus on chapters four through six, review chapters one through three, answer any questions and see what God wants to do.